SpaceX Starship, IFT4, go or no go? That's the question. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Misty Morning and Focus Combination. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We'll be talking about space and SpaceX and the IFT-4. If you don't know what IFT is, an IFT is Integrated Flight Test. That is basically when they combined the Starship, which looks kind of like this, of course, we have a model today, right? Starship with the lower half, which is the super heavy. Combine the two, launch them into space. This is basically the test and it's going to be going on tomorrow. So I'm going to be live tomorrow. We're going to have like a little bit of a party, a little watching party like we always do for every one of these tests. Hopefully it doesn't blow up this time. But then again, some of you guys might want to see the blow up because it's kind of cool too. So you end up with a millions and millions of dollar firework display. Anyways, I was reading an article over on Space Explored and they kind of consolidated on what to expect. And I want to go through that with you, but I also want to give you my thoughts on what I think will end up happening going forward with this IFT4 test flight. So before we get into this, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my ebooks, check them out. They are 100% free just for you being here. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. And if you enjoy this content or find it even a little bit entertaining, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. If you are, thank you very much. Click this little button over here, notification button. So when I go live, when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately like tomorrow morning, we'll be live. Also, if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there'll be a little thank you button down here. You can click on that, give a dollar or two. That'd be great. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more Starlink content after watching this video, don't do it now. You'll click right here and you'll find about 280, 290 videos I've put together just for you just on SpaceX Starlink. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, how to set things up, but more importantly, the why behind it all. Anyways, now that the housekeeping is done, let's get right into this article and then some commentary. And then finally, I want to hear from you down below in the comment area. So it starts out by saying the FAA has approved Starship to launch once again. But this time it seems to have been written to give SpaceX the ability to launch again without another FAA investigation if there is a failure somewhere this time. The company is now making final preparations for the launch on Thursday, June 6th. That's tomorrow. Tuesday afternoon, the FAA announced it modified SpaceX's existing launch license for its Starship launch vehicle for another launch prior to completion of a safety and mishap investigation by the FAA, the agency, and the company. This clears the red tape ahead of SpaceX's planned Thursday launch of Ship 29 and Booster 11 vehicles. The approval might also clear investigations by the FAA in the future with the license wording suggesting no review needed if a similar failure occurs. I think that failure has to do with if there was a problem with the vehicle blowing up literally at 50 or 100 kilometers. Well, it's not going to impact the safety of any human on Earth, right? Or any structure. So at that point, they're probably not going to do as much or as thorough of investigation. Or if they do do the investigation, that will not impede SpaceX for going forward to IFT5 and IFT6, which I think is really, really important. And I think a lot of that has to do with NASA and the government saying, listen, Elon Musk needs to go forward with that. We're putting 50% of our eggs into their basket, into SpaceX's basket, and we need to let them do what they do. Let's cut some of that red tape a little bit and make it a little bit easier for them to not only innovate, to iterate and constantly fix the problems and basically blow shit up. Anyways, the article continues. Starship Flight 4 will have a group of key mission objectives, many similar to Flight 3. First, another successful ascent will provide more valuable data and prove that Flight 3's ascent wasn't a fluke. Pretty important. 
second, and extremely important for Starship's and even NASA's development timeline, will be splashing down the ship into the ocean at the end of the flight, obviously not blowing it up. And yeah, NASA will probably like to see that. Like I said, Artemis is very dependent on this actually all working because of their timeline when they want the Artemis to actually fly. Anyways, without this, SpaceX cannot move forward with bigger and longer test flights. On flight three, most of these objectives took place without issue. The rocket lifted off with the booster placing the ship into its correct flight trajectory. However, three things did not go right on the mission. Opening the payload door didn't seem to be successful. Issues with the attitude control meant that the propellant transfer test did not get completed and the ship did not survive re-entry. It didn't. So going into Thursday, if any of these objectives do not succeed, again, I would personally look at this as a failure. NASA really needs SpaceX to move forward with Starship's development. Just like I said, absolutely. Well, there are a lot of things with the Artemis that could cause the first landing to be delayed. The HLS or human landing system was a big risk for NASA that it needs to get right. Yeah. They're not getting it right. SpaceX is going to end up getting it right. So anyways, streams from local outlets will start up in the wee early hours in the morning on Thursday. SpaceX's official stream will pop up closer to launch. It's actually about 30 minutes before launch. However, it seems that Boeing's Starliner will be the first crewed mission outshined by Starship's IFT-4. Yeah, but... Honestly, will Boeing Starliner even take off? Who knows? They keep on scrubbing that mission. They keep pushing it further and further and further back. So it might not actually be outshined at all because it might happen a week or two weeks or a month from now. We don't know. Anyways, the bottom line is, what are the objectives as of tomorrow? And uh, number one, of course, it is a repeat of that picture-perfect ascent into orbit. That's number one. Number two, Hot staging actually works once again because they did some modifications to the hot staging ring. So we'll see what ends up happening with that. If you don't know, hot staging is basically where the engines on the Starship actually ignite prior to Super Heavy actually detaching. That's basically how it works. The Russians have been doing that for decades and decades and decades. And SpaceX said, you know what, why don't we give it a shot? And it actually worked really well. So hopefully that happens once again. Once again, rinse and repeat. As long as it works, we're good. Executing a landing burn. Now, a landing burn on the Super Heavy in the Gulf of Mexico. What does that mean? Instead of Super Heavy just splashing into the Gulf of Mexico, basically it's like this. This is obviously not the Super Heavy, but make believe it is. So instead of just coming straight in, belly flopping into the ocean, it will come in and then right itself and then slowly land in the ocean, all right? That's what they're trying to accomplish. Why is that? Because that is the exact maneuver that needs to happen if they're going to use the salad tongs, let's say, to actually catch it back where it came from in Texas, right? So that is very important. Now the Starship is going to end up having to do the exact same thing eventually. And the final major achievement is taking that starship and belly flopping it into the Indian Ocean, meaning that it actually traversed the entire globe, went completely around and then back into the ocean. Now, what are some secondary objectives, in my personal opinion? Number one, they're going to have to move the propellant from the lower stage to the upper stage, from super heavy into the starship. Moving that propellant is very, very important for the Artemis mission. I'm not going to go into all of that why, but it is. On orbit or in orbit, you need to be able to move propellant. They did not show that that was successful the last time. Also, they need to completely open the cargo bay door. The reason being is that cargo bay door at the top, all right, opens up and it shoots out like chiclets, like a Pez dispenser, right? It shoots out Pez, let's say, and those Pez are actually satellites. So that door needs to open completely. Now, to add on to that would be really nice if they were to actually shoot out either a satellite, just a test satellite, or something, a dummy satellite, the same shape and size as a SpaceX Starlink 
version three satellite, or as I used to call them, the version two maxis, the large one. Now that would be really, really nice. That would, that would really elevate this mission. And then finally, which I don't think will happen, but it would be nice if they were able to soft land the Starship in the Indian Ocean. So instead of belly flopping into the ocean, once again, like Super Heavy, come in and then right itself and then come down with that soft landing. That would be picture perfect right there. That would be awesome. So once again, I don't think that will happen. I think they just want to get it to the ocean and not blow it up somewhere in the atmosphere or in orbit. So we'll see what ends up happening with that. Now, what does the timeline look like? Matter of fact, you know what I'm gonna do? Maybe I'll put it here or I'll put it over my face. That timeline is how things are going to go down. Hit pause on the video and take a picture with your phone or something like that in case you want to know that timeline on how it all goes down. I will be showing that obviously tomorrow when we do go live and we hang out and have this launch party, let's call it, where we're just chit-chatting about space and Starlink and anything else that you want to chat about. The same thing as my JC Live shows that we do every Friday at 8.30 p.m. If you're not there, be there. Come join us on Friday. Sometimes my wife is even with me. So you have to just look at this mug. Anyways, guys, we'll be live once again tomorrow, usually about an hour prior to launch. The launch will be at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I'll be here between 7 and 7.30. SpaceX is going to go live with their coverage about 30 minutes prior. So we'll definitely be there, most likely before. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this interesting or maybe entertaining. If you did, throw it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. And don't forget, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. Check out my merch and my tees and my shirts and cups and all kinds of other stuff. My book, How to Create a Digital Fort Knox, Backing Up Your Digital Life. Awesome. You need to back up. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.